in the biblical view, the world, the flesh, and the devil are part of a world system in the power of the devil. If we could discern with spiritual eyes the, the planet from a distance, it would be dark and surrounded by demons and spiritually dead except for these points of light. No apologies to George Bush. Okay, The world is in the power of the devil. Baptism gives us a victory over that. While all the world is in the power of the devil, all those who come to the waters of baptism are washed of their sin and of the evil spirit that it inhabited them. Here are some verses. <clears throat> John Chapter 12, verse 31. The world is in the power of Satan. Jesus says, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. The prince of the world's power was broken by the cross of Christ and his resurrection from the dead, or else this world would be completely dark and doomed. John 16, verses 7 through 11. Nevertheless, I tell you, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father. And ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the Prince of this world is judged. Here we have again our Lord alluding to <clears throat> Satan as the prince of this world. And the role here of the Comforter, the role of the Holy Ghost in changing this situation. So it is God the Holy Ghost who works in circumcising that new Israelite, that true Israelite, by baptism. <clears throat> Second Corinthians 4, verses 3 and 4. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Those who reject Christ may claim to be agnostic or atheist, but they are actually worshiping the God of this world. 1 John 5, 18 and 19. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. How do we become born of God? Look at 1 John 5. Pick up the Bible. Look at 1st I'm not just talking to, to, to have you listen to me. I want you to understand this. 1 John 5, 18 and 19. <clears throat> we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. How is one born of God? Thank you. So how does one get out of the grip of the power of the, the God of this world? By being born of God. And how is one born of God? Okay. The wicked one cannot touch him. They say Luther was suddenly to fix the terrible depression would console himself by saying, Baptizaki Sud, which means I am baptized. Whatever else Mm -hmm. So is baptism a serious subject? If we don't want to be subject to the principalities and powers of this world, we want to be uh, subjugated to God, not to the devil. How does one do that? One does that by being circumcised. And we are circumcised by baptism the mark of the covenant. We are taken out of the power of the devil 
and we are put in to the power of God. So that's the first thing. We have victory over the evil that is resonant spiritually in this world. <clears throat> the last uh, um, scripture uh, regarding the power of the devil over human beings uh, in this world, which baptism provides us a means of escape, is Luke 4, 6, where uh, the devil says to Christ, All this power I'll give thee in the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. If you will worship me, all this will be yours. Skip the cross. Just worship me. So, just as the Jews understood what baptism was, Baptism is the ridding of the convert of the evil in his life and replacing it with God's spirit. <coughs> Here's a, a good way to remember that. In the old prayer books and in most of the prayers, and Peter Toon wrote an article about how the word ghost is preferable to the word spirit when we refer to the third person of the Holy Trinity. Ghost, he says, and he makes a very strong argument, is a good German and Anglican word, whereas spirit is a Latin word. And ghost actually gives us a better insight into the person of, of the Holy Ghost, the third person of the Trinity. Ghost is from the German Geist, which means spirit. But both Geist and ghost share the old Germanic and English root gast, G-A-S-T, from which we have our word guest. And so in baptism, God is the holy guest within the soul of the person who receives the waters of baptism. He is the holy spiritual guest which inhabits the newly baptized. The Spirit of God, in other words, as he did in the Old Covenant, fills the temple of God. The temple of God in the Old Covenant was filled with the power and presence of God. In our baptism, becoming part of the covenant people, we are filled with that holy spiritual guest. 